Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend. And in this episode of our rehab series on this house in Bullhead City, Arizona, we are gonna transform this very outdated kitchen from this to this. So let's get started. If you break it, he will fix it. If you buy it, he will build it. House on the Mend. So let's give you a quick rundown on this kitchen and what I want to do with it. Uh, first off, this sink is, as I did in the original walkthrough episode, as I showed, is chipped all over the place, very old and unsightly. So I want to replace um, this sink and the faucet. The countertops are fine. There's a couple little spots. I might glue down some side trim, um, but otherwise it's in pretty decent shape, especially for a rental. Uh, we removed all the old, way outdated uh, appliances. We're gonna put all brand new appliances in. Uh, I still need to clean the walls and get all this goop off of here from years of uh, cooking and cleaning and dust buildup. Uh, but before I really clean the area, I wanted to remove the uh, kitchen lighting here. This is your standard um, raised ceiling fluorescent light bulb fixture with these diffusers that are plastic and they're kind of saggy. I really don't care for this look anymore. So we're going to take all this out. Uh, and then after that, we can do a real good deep cleaning. And as I said earlier in uh, one of the first episodes, I actually like the look of these doors as far as this kind of farmhouse look with the um, what looks like slats going vertically and then these horizontal cross braces. I think that looks neat, but what I do want is uh, them to be painted. So we're gonna wash them down with TSP and get them spotless clean and then paint them. And I'm thinking of a uh, leaving this white background and then like a kind of a battleship gray kind of a look. I think that'll look really nice in here. So let's get right into uh, dismantling this whole lighting fixture deal we have here. These little uh, plastic sheets, they just, uh, you push them up and they slide right out. And then this frame that goes all the way around is held in with uh, some nails. And we're just gonna take a hammer with the uh, claw on the back, pop those nails out and then try to try to gently uh, get in with a seven in one tool and get this framing material uh, off and out of the way. And then I'm thinking of taking out the ballasts that are just buzzy and flickery and such a hassle. And I want to put in um, faux LED can lights. So they're uh, actual LED, but they're not the whole can that has to be uh, installed from up in the attic. Instead, they can be flush mounted right to the um, ceiling. And then I wanna dress up this area here with some nice trim, almost like door casing trim to kind of accent the space. Let me get me a respirator out of the way here so it doesn't hit the microphone. We've got all four of the ballasts down and uh, fluorescent ballasts act as their own box. Uh, and so we're gonna need to bring this project to code and for our own safety and to have something to mount the LED lights to, we're gonna need to install uh, boxes. So I went and got these. I like the little ones with the wings that you screw down. The wings go inside, pop out, uh, but these have this little metal um, bracket on the back that uh, flares out a bit and you can use a screwdriver to tighten them down once you push that in. So I marked the circumference of this electrical box on a piece of uh, like cardboard paper. And then I cut out for the wiring. I put it right up here like this, traced around with the Sharpie. And now we are ready to cut. Now there's all kinds of power tools that are designed to quickly cut sheetrock, but in this case, since this electrical wiring is right here, I don't want to damage it. Of course, the breakers already turned off, but I don't want to damage this wiring. So I'm going to cut by hand. Now that flanges out 
on either side. We can take a drill with an extended bit since it's way up in there, the screws, and we can clamp that down into place. Well, the first coat's done and it already feels like it's brighter in here. Let's put these LED lights up. So on the, on the back side here, there's little spots for uh, screws to go into. And those correspond with the openings on this electrical box. I really like these uh, Wago connectors. They're so good. The clear plastic, you can slide the wire right up to the spot where the insulation is prior to the uh, clamp. So you know you're not going over and actually clamping onto the insulation. There. And then we'll just rotate it into place. Good. We got one more and then we can turn it on and see how much brighter it is in here. All right, let's give it a look. Yes. Look at that bright, clean light. This is uh, 5,000 Kelvin, so very, very white, cool light, they call it. All right, so the final thing to do up here is to trim out this uh, junction where the box meets the ceiling here. So we'll start with the strip going this way and then finish it out with a uh, strip that's mitered going all the way around. That's gonna look nice. Well, I really like the way these lights turned out. It's such a clean look. So now let's shift our attention to the cabinet doors. I wanna remove all the cabinet doors, wash them all with TSP and a scrub brush to degrease them really good. And once that's done, then I'm going to wash the cabinet bases themselves and the walls. Uh, there are some spots like where the stove and the microwave were and the refrigerator that the paint is a different color and there's a lot of grime from cooking over here. So I'm gonna scrub all this down really good and just paint the whole uh, area that you see here white. And I just think that'll be a nice clean look. It won't seem like it's unfinished right here where all this splatter is. All right, let's take these off. All right, when it comes to the doors, I wanna mark them so I can keep track of where they all go because they're probably not gonna line up properly if you don't do that important step. So right here where the hinges were, uh, it, it doesn't matter if there's any paint there because the hinges are gonna go right back on and uh, cover that up. So that's why I like to take a small piece of painter's tape and this Sharpie and mark them so I can keep track of them. So this is the kitchen. These are the top row of doors. And uh, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go KT, one, two, three, and so on around, and then KB for the bottom in the kitchen, all the way around, 
and that way it'll be a lot quicker to just slap them all back on when it's uh, time. Let me get the rest of these off and we'll start cleaning them. About 90% of these hinges are broken, uh, meaning that this plastic piece that retains these springs is breaking off and the springs are just popping out everywhere as I take them off. And what those do is hold these hinges closed so the doors stay close to the cabinets themselves. And you can see that has also happened here, that this one has broken and thus they installed a magnet and a, a little clasp here to keep the door closed. So we're gonna have to replace all these hinges for ones that uh, aren't rotted out. Well, it's time for everything to get cleaned. Well, this cabinet door looks like it absorbed the frag from a ketchup grenade. Well, that's the entire count of 30 doors done on one side. I let them dry overnight and now I've tacked everything clean and we're ready to do the other sides. I would have to say the biggest challenge with painting the first side was not getting my own sweat dripping off of my face because we're in this hot sunroom falling on the fresh paint. So if you see me bending down like this to lay down a cabinet door, it's because I'm trying to avoid that. All right. Back at it. I'm back inside today with a nice reprieve from the heat. Let's get to painting these cabinet frames. Next step is to clean all these drawer fronts with the same TSP 5-in-1 tool to scrape off all this old ketchup or food product, whatever it is, and get them ready for paint. All right, that's quite a pile of drawers. So once these dry, I'll tape them off and we can paint the fronts. And these are shelves that go over in the pantry, so I'm going to see if I can't sand some of these stains out of them. What do you think? Does the TSP have a rough effect on these rubber gloves? Well, the paint's all dry on these drawer faces and they turned out great. Time to take the tape off, but rather than just peeling it straight off and risking pulling up some of the paint off, which is really unsightly, I like to take a razor blade and just score that edge. That way we get a nice clean break. All right. And then I also have these little clear bumpers that I'm putting on so we don't have paint on paint contact that could make it sticky. Perfect. So I got this box of cabinet hardware off of Amazon. It comes with bumpers and then all the screws that you'll need. And if we look here, they are almost an exact copy. Just a little bit off that way but all the holes are gonna line up nonetheless. Let's peel back this tape and see which door this is. Kitchen top 10.
Well, today is a big day. We are going to be replacing this white porcelain chipped up sink and really heavily corroded faucet with this brand new stainless steel sink. This beautiful updated Moen faucet. Brand new uh, drain piping and brand new garbage disposal. So the first thing to do is disconnect all of this plumbing that's existing, get underneath, disconnect every mounting screw that's holding this old sink in and then very carefully remove it. So here's a great tip. Rather than installing the sink first and then having to uncomfortably lay underneath it to attach everything, way better to set it on a countertop. I've got a moving blanket here to protect the stainless steel from getting any mars or scratches and build up the drains, the garbage disposal, all the piping, the faucet, any plugs, anything else that you have to do right here at a nice comfortable standing distance. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Well, it's not every day I get to mount a microwave without the stove being right here in my way. So I'm looking forward to it. Got our template all set up here for where the uh, bottom um, piece goes that holds the microwave in place. Well, I got the gas line for this stove all hooked up, but before I plug in the power cord, I wanna first charge that gas line and do a leak test. And the normal, totally acceptable thing to do is just to use dish soap, put it in a spray bottle or dab some soap and water on a brush and see if you get any bubbles. But this GE oven comes with this little vial of fluorescent leak detector. So I'm gonna try that out. Well, what a difference we've made in this kitchen. I'd have to say the most striking thing is the stainless steel appliances. Just a nice, updated, clean look. I love the fact that we have a functioning microwave up top over the range rather than the range hood that used to be there. Just a must in today's kitchens, in my opinion, to save countertop space. The sink is matching stainless steel and we've got a brand new faucet. Just a beautiful complimentary look. Of course, the cabinet paint is among my favorite colors. I just think that kind of battleship gray with this slightly bluish hue to it as well really uh, contrasts well against the white walls and complements the appliances. And then finally, 
the lighting. What a difference from those really old ballasts and the plastic pieces and the flickering and the noisy buzzing to this clean, silent, but nice bright white lighting. It's gonna make cooking in here just a pleasure. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more viewers like you. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content and there's more videos to come. I'm gonna leave a link for everything that we talked about and the tools that I used in the description below. Full disclosure, those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify all the extra time it takes to set up video and audio and lighting for a project of this scale. Now, speaking of this project, our next video is going to be on flooring. So I have a great tool that we are going to review that's helping out with that flooring, and I can't wait for you to see that video. So until next time, thank you for watching.